Hi everyone and welcome to this afternoon session or the second session today uh, where we are focusing on presenter 10. This morning we had a little bit of a look at um, how you can create simple flipped learning videos using uh, presenter 10. Today we're going to have a look at some of the other interactive components that you can use with presenter. My name is Pip Cleaves and today I am both the host and the presenter. Uh, it is a reasonable hour now, so um, hopefully we can get through this without too much pain. So um, I'm going to work with you um, around um, what we can do to make Presenter a really great tool for your flipped classroom. And, okay, fantastic. So I'm just going to share my screen. Just bear with me for a second. I do seem to have a connection that's secure. So let's just turn to share any second now. Thank you. Very good. Uh, it's just coming this morning. We had a small issue with the uh, presentation deck not sharing. So I'm just going to share that with you. you uh, now we're just spinning and spinning and spinning. Well, has anyone? Let's just see while we're waiting for this to happen. Who has had some exam, um, some experience using the interactive? Um, if you could, that would be wonderful. I've got a funny feeling I might be looking out to change my Wi-Fi connectivity over for just a second, which will just involve. A slight uh, to our uh, note, we should be right, probably good to go. Okay, I'm just going to share. Uh, I will be right back. In the meantime, Lisa might just quickly explain how you can get access to through the Connect Ed um, uh, program. to 10. So I will be right back shortly. I'd be happy to do that. Pip, can folks hear me on the line? This is Melissa Jones. I'm just stepping in for Pip quickly. Good, glad. Pip is going to go ahead and just reset her Wi-Fi connection so that she'll be right back. I think we're getting a little bit of a lag. Thanks so much for joining us today. So as Pip mentioned, um, we do have um, a really great opportunity for educators in North America and the U.S. actually. If you're working at a Title I school, um, you can put in a request for free Adobe Presenter as well as Captivate, Photoshop Elements, and Premiere Elements. So I see that Pip has put the link to the application for this free software donation in the chat pod. I will post it again here. Um, so if you're excited about Presenter after what you see here today from PIP, please do go ahead and fill that out. If you're not at a Title I school um, or if you're not in the U.S., um, please do send us um, your ideas. We'd love to hear how you'd like to use Presenter and, and how you see it working in your classroom. So we'll just give PIP a couple more minutes here to get back into the room. Looks like Pip is back here. Pip, do you want to check your mic? I see her screen, so that's good. Hi, everyone. Just checking that you can hear me now. Sounds great, Pip. Thank you so much. Apologies for that. I'm uh, in a school today, and I thought I would have better than normal connectivity, but unfortunately, no. So we're just going to go jump straight ahead and go into where I left off where we were talking about flipped learning and what makes flipped learning so important and how we can do it uh, in the best possible way using Presenter 10. So we've got two different uh, sessions today. Of course, we did flipped classroom videos this morning and we're just going to work with creating interactive learning activities this afternoon. I think it's really important for me when I think about 
flip learning that it's not just about the creation of um, it's not just about the creation of videos and pushing videos for students to watch, but it's that interaction and knowing how the students have um, understood and developed understanding around the content and how we can map and understand what they're coming to class with. So some of the questions you might like to think about um, as you're creating your flipped classroom is where are you going to bring the content together? How are you going to actually deliver that content to students, if you like? Are you going to create a Muse site and bring all the videos into that? Are you going to use a course through um, the Adobe dashboard that I'll explain to you shortly? Are you going to create your own or are you going to tap into some of the great content that's out there? How do you know that the students have actually completed their work before returning to class for those deeper questions? What are you going to do to ensure that? And then how can you um, know that once back in class, which students have created which bits of work, how you can support them if support is needed, how you can deepen their understanding if necessary. So some ways in which you can deliver your content. There is, of course, the syllabus area within the Adobe Education Exchange, which can be used, the syllabus creator, or you could use some of these other sites that are around there. There's a couple of Australian ones in here, such as Scootle, so you won't be able to access that in America. But things like your um, Google in the Classroom, Office 365, your Weebly, Blendspace, or your local LMS that you're using, Edmodo is a great space for that as well. To find pre-created content, you, of course, have Adobe TV and the Adobe Education Exchange, where there's so many great tutorials there that you can use, or you can look into different areas as well. So I think it's really, uh, if you are really going to think about Flip Classroom, it's about integrating questioning strategies that develop collaborative discussion and higher order thinking, um, and that's what makes an essential Flip Classroom. But in order to get to those questioning strategies, we have to create great content if you are going to be creating content. So what we are going to do now is following on from this morning. This morning I was on my Mac and we used the Video Express um, tool to create a video. Now I'm on my PC and we can do that just straight via this record button here the, just to show you uh, the impact of this morning. This is the exact same interface as the map and I would choose the record button here and head in, hi everyone, head into the record area to record that, that video. I'm on my Mac so I'd be recording this. I'm not going to go into this. I just wanted to show you that it's the same as we did this morning. So please feel free if you weren't here this morning to go back and check out that session from this morning. Just going to close that. I'm going to exit out of one thing that I do love about um, the PC version is when we uh, start creating a video, it automatically puts us into presentation mode. So back a step, how do I get presenter onto my computer? I need to install it. It's a downloadable install from the presenter site. And there's links and information for all this stuff and it is linked via Flipping Learning 2014, so bit.ly, Flipping Learning 2014. And this is a bit of a document to help you um, have a think about some of the how you might flip. And then towards the bottom of this, you'll see there's some links there for using Presenter and even Captivate. So this is a little bit of an overriding document. So let's head back to once you have downloaded via the Adobe Store, or if you are a Connect Ed school, you have access for 30 licenses within your school. And you'll see there's a link in the chat pod that you might like for that. So once you've installed it, it appears in PowerPoint 2013. You do need um, Office 2013 installed in your computer, but uh, Office 2013 is now uh, free for most people around the globe, most education peeps around the globe. So you can look into that. But once you install it, we have a tab across the top the Adobe Presenter tab. And I can do some basic things like I can um, record just some audio and it'll put an audio on top of every slide without a video. I can bring in audio from elsewhere if I like. I can, as I've just done now, I can record audio. Um, I can record a video and edit that and bring it together. But what I'm actually going to show you now is some of the interactive components we can add into our um, 
presentation, presentations and tutorials. So one of the things we can do, first of all, is this interaction button. And I'm going to choose, now Presenter 10 is used heavily for e-learning. So there's some already built scenarios in here and some different sort of interactions that you can use. And you can have a certificate at the end. These are all, I'm just all sort of um, pre-formatted, lovely um, um, click and they move forward activities for you. But the one we're actually going to do now is a jigsaw puzzle because I think this could be quite a cool activity. So I've clicked on interaction and jigsaw puzzle. And now I'm going to choose browse and I'm going to head out onto my computer to find an image that I want to become the interaction. So for this one, I'm going to use this um, thing about different poetries. And I'm going to make it a 400 by 400 size. I would like to have 16 pieces in this. And am I going to set a timer? Yeah, but I think I'll make it like five minutes because these students may need a bit extra time. And I'm going to say well done. Well done. Give, so once they get all their jigsaw correct, What's the text I'm going to pop in here? And then time out, time up, try again into that area there. So now I hit OK. So you will see now that there is a lovely, it says do not resize, warning, warning, a lovely piece there. One thing I perhaps should have done, I always forget this, bad move, is to add a new slide. So I am going to be very, very delicate. And control X, control V that across. Yes, it worked. Okay, so that's ready. The girls will go through, through have a this one, and then when this plays, it will be a jigsaw puzzle for them to interact with. Okay, heading back to my Adobe Presenter um, at the top. So just to have a little bit of a look, just adding a new slide in here, heading back to Presenter. Some of the other interactions that are in here are the scenario interactions. And it's almost like it's um it's sort of like a call set. So this one's a call center, and it's going to uh, did I ask you my computer. There we go. It's going to show us something that looks very learning corporate like. Uh, exactly what I want. So I don't use those areas at all, but you can. There's a whole heap of characters here. So if you want to add some characters into your presentations, they've already been mapped into here. Um, it's a bell time outside, so excuse the sound of the students. So, and you can see you can add different people into your presentations uh, to make them look really cool as well. Again, perhaps a little bit more corporate focus than education focus, but they're there for you to use, so you might like to explore those. Again, we have some scenes we can use. So if I'm doing some medical training, we've got medical training there, we've got offices, and we've got outside the office. So some of these outside the office may work for school uh, scenarios. I'm not too sure how you feel about that, so we can pop that in. So you can see you've got your, some, some scenarios there, you can some people in there, and you can make it work nicely. I'm just going to do so that's our interactions, our characters. We can insert videos and things in here. Very handy to me. I'm going to head in to add some quizzes. So I want students to complete some questions as we work through this. And I'm going to map these later using the Adobe dashboard. I can find out how the students have answered these and um, get the analytics behind it. So the first thing I need to do is, sorry, first of all, I'm going to choose this first area is um, it remembers the quizzes you do over time. So if you're doing one for, say, a new unit of work, you perhaps need to create a new quiz. And I'm going to call this ooh, um, February. Hopefully I'm spelling it right. Not February because it's definitely not February. It's February. Um, and you'll see here that this has got a quiz. Well, I can then start. Once I highlight on the quiz I want to add questions for, I then choose add a question. And these are the options that I have. I can add a multiple choice question. I can add a true false answer question. I can add a fill in the blank question, a short answer, 
a matching question where we like kind of we've got so I'm a, um, a language teacher I could have some script on one side and vocabulary on the other side like it we can do sequencing we can have a hotspot where you're asking students to click on a specific area of an image great for say science if you want them to label scientific experiments geographic um, scenario or we have a drag and drop so the one I'm going to have a look at now is just a simple one to get going and let's start with our multiple choice and we can choose either a graded question or just a normal survey question um, I'm going to choose a greater one for this. So what is the question here? So let's say what types of poetry are specific to Asian cultures? So just to get a bit of background knowledge on the on the girls, what their um their what their questions are. How many points am I going to give this? Yeah, I'll give this ten. So now I need to start adding some answers for them to choose. So I might say a sonnet, I might add uh, in here a haiku, I might add an acrostic, and then I might add a, ooh, I got an, a, a limerick. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if the spelling's right. Uh, is it a K? No, it's a CK. There we go. And um, do I want the numbering to be A, B, C? So I do have some options here. I can have a multiple responses. So say you want, you've got a whole list of things and you want to pick the top five or the top three. We can choose that there. But I'm just going to choose single response for this. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit OK. So now that quiz is going to pop in here. So you can see. Um, underneath, the first time I looked at this, I went, oh, my goodness, what are all those boxes? Well, basically, these are the possible responses that might pop up for students depending on what they've answered. So you'll see here that um, you've got correct, click anywhere to continue or press Y. So the instructions are there for you. You can edit these. Um, oops, we might control set that and change them as you want. So using language that's um, appropriate for your classroom and, and how you usually speak. And we then got our different answers. The correct answer is, and then your answer. Okay, I'm just putting that there now. And you'll see here um, that we've got, they can, you get that feedback on that. So if I wanted to have a little bit of a preview on what this looks like, it's just going to quickly um, create, this is a small deck, so it's not going to take long. Of course, the more you put in here, the longer it's going to take to preview and to create your files. Just a second, it's coming through. Um, just as a heads up, there is a fantastic e-learning blog, an Adobe e-learning blog, which has a variety of resources for you around uh, using these tools. So there's our jigsaw puzzle. Can you see now? I'm in preview mode at the moment. Oh, I'm just going to stop that. I'm going to go back because I haven't tinkered with my settings for that yet. So here's what the jigsaw puzzle can look like. Cool. And then if we just go to our next slide, here's our question. So we chose haiku. I probably uh, did the wrong one. I didn't put the right answer in there. Apologies. And then here is um, at the end you're going to get all the questions you've done in that February uh, question is going to be answered for you. So I'm just going to close out of this preview now and move into the next session. So again, that's our quiz area and we can add all sorts of quizzes and all sorts of tinkering within that in there. Okay, so next we want to publish this. And we have our choices of um, anyone who's used this presenter in the past will know how to uh, save this. And you can get it onto your computer. And then if you are using um, something like a Weebly, you point it to the index page like you've always done. But what we are going to do now is have a look at the um, up in the learning dashboard. So I want to enable the collaboration with this. So I want to uh, tap into the analytics. So I'm going to click on Learning Dashboard. 
and it will open up up and send me out into what's called the adult and I've already logged into this when you first come it's going to ask you are you on presenter 9 or presenter 10 and this URL for it wants to know is als.adobe.com that's your basic entry point and you can log into that from anywhere this is the place where you can tap in to see where students are up to where you can create if you like the back end and, but you can still put the um, your content into, apparently it's SCORM compliant, it works with TinCan, it has all that LMS stuff as well as using it elsewhere. So when we log into the dashboard, there's an example course here for you. I mustn't take the credit for this. Um, but here's a great course to show you some of the options. So we have here, this course is about algebra. And we have a linear equation. You can see here um, what scores they're getting and where they're up to. So students with score and medium participation score, there's seven of those. So we can get a snapshot. Uh, this is for module part one. I can also click on a student and it will take me to see the information for that student in general. The bit.ly link. Uh, sorry, I just had a quick look. I shouldn't have done that. I had a look over at the chat area. Um, the bit.ly link is bit.ly forward slash flipping learning 2014. So when you're in here, you can have a look at individual students' responses. So I can see that this student got 100% and the class median is 60. I can see here in participation, he got 66 and the class median is 41. So we can pop in and have a look at all that sort of information. We can create modules in here, so or we'll get your data back on your different modules. You can see here, just it's going to take a little second to load. Um, the average, I can see the average time spent per slide. So I can see as people are forwarding through whether they're taking time to read the content or if it's as anticipated the number of times people have visited slides, the past and failed, the participation score. It's really cool. Uh, then we can head into discussions because we can enable collaboration to happen. But what we do to create a new course is click on the new course. I'm going to call this February. Today's date is the 26th. It's going to end on the 28th. And we're going to have three students. Choose next. And here is uh, the video that I uploaded this morning. And we can choose create. And the course has been created for me. So I have a, a course here for February. And it doesn't have any uh, interactive. It's just the video from this morning. So if I head back now to my modules. Oh, no. Yeah. And drop down here to February. I have the information here now for that. Um, there's no quizzes included because it was just the video. If I uploaded a video, I would see the actual results for that. So that's um, some information that's kind of showing you how that can work. So this again is the learner dashboard. Now when you first come to this page, if it's your first time, you can play the video and I also recommend any work by Pooja Jai Singh is fantastic to show you how. There's a great course in Adobe Know How, uh, website Adobe Know How, which will walk you through setting up your courses and modules in the Adobe dashboard. Okay, so I think now I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a minute and I'm going to head back into the presentation area. And just heading to here, um, I can see there's, uh, if there's any questions, let's head through um, and see if there's any questions at this point. Has, um, does anyone have any questions? I might just share some links. So this morning's session um, that we had, if you wanted to watch that video, it will probably in a day or so, so um, be at the session one or back on the registration page. And this session here, you'll be able to get to via this link. I'd also like to recommend, if you'd like to look at anything, the Adobe eLearning blog, which is curated by Alan Partridge and Pooja Jai Singh. 
has some wonderful um, how-tos and support there for you. And the document that I was just uh, talking about before um, is at http bit.ly clipping learning 2014. And that should get you through to use. I put three T's in that. Please apologize. Don't forget if you are a connected learning uh, school, you would like to, you might like to um, find out more information about the Connect Ed there and um, work from there. For some basic presenter 10 information and uh, and uh, features, you can pop into the presenter 10 features area. There is also, um, I, I guess that's um, probably the best the best support I can give you with using Presenter. It's very much a get in there and experiment. The first thing I would recommend doing is using uh, creating a video and uploading that to get the analytics on the student's participation in the video and then try adding some interactive um, components as you go. So um, I'm just wondering um, if everybody, anyone had any questions or if you wanted to just pop for me into the poll area your feedback for this session. But um, it is about time to head off. So that was a very quick one. But I'm wondering if anyone is, um, is, is, is all good with that, if there's any feedback or questions at this stage. I think we're good then. Everyone's quiet. If you could, for me, just fill out the uh, the poll, that would be wonderful. Thank you. And um, I see Bill, Bill Gillespie's online as well. Bill, uh, Presenter 10 should be enabled. I was just using it before inside the Department of Ed um, and the dashboard and all that stuff was working beautifully uh, there as well. So uh, thanks for coming, everyone. I hope that um, you've got a little bit of inspiration to get out there and, and give presenter a go. And we will see you all in two weeks' time. In two weeks' time, we have a session on the wonderful uh, Ross Wallace will be leading us on Photoshop Touch on the iPad and how we can edit things on the view. Uh, first of all, we'll be learning how to make a montage using Photoshop Touch. And then we will be um, looking at how to, what was the second one? The second one was easy editing on the go using Photoshop. So there's a whole variety of things. And don't forget, we have the um, professional, the events page. We also have this Sunday starting off a wonderful new um, Adobe Generations professional course, which is the Adobe Gen Pro digital imaging course, which starts this weekend. So jump on board for that to find out more about all the different professional development we're doing, just pop into um, this link here and you'll be able to find our courses, our workshops and our webinars. So have a great day everyone or afternoon and uh, we will see you in two weeks time with Ross Wallace. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, thanks.